barrier in Malaysia and Indonesia and still growing. We are one of the largest plantation companies in the country. IOI has grown into a global enterprise with operations in eight countries exporting to more than 85 countries worldwide. Our hands-on management and commitment to productivity has led us to being recognized as one of the industry's most cost-efficient palm oil producers. Our relentless pursuit for new opportunities for growth has also made IOI one of the largest vertically integrated palm oil companies in the world. From plantation to downstream manufacturing, our refineries in Malaysia and the Netherlands play an important role in the midstream segment of our supply chain. In the downstream manufacturing segment, we are one of the world's largest oleochemicals and palm-based fatty acid producers with production facilities in Malaysia and Germany. Our ester plant in Germany is one of the exclusive few in the world which is both GMP certified and US FDA approved to produce chemical ingredients for pharmaceutical application. IOI is also a major global player in specialty oils and fats with operations in the Netherlands, United States, Canada, Ghana, China and Malaysia that are carried out by its associate company Bangi Lotus Crocline. Leveraging on its more than 120-year-old history, expertise in lipid solutions and state-of-the-art facilities, Bangi Lotus Crocline delivers reliable and quality products for the global food and infant formula manufacturing industry. IOI believes in the transformative power of technology and progressively invests into research and development to enhance our commitment to quality. IOI Palm Biotech has spearheaded planting material improvements for nearly three decades. Its tissue culture laboratory is leading research in high-yielding oil palm clones, boosting its plantation productivity through biotechnology. Continuing our commitment to its R&D and innovation, our downstream manufacturing business has formed collaborations with world-class partners who value our expertise and know-how. Together, we work to create customized and value-added solutions for our clients in unique and specialized settings, such as our creative studios. IOI is led by a loyal workforce from more than 25 countries who strive daily to increase value-add and deliver results for our customers and shareholders. Across every division and country in which we operate, we value and promote diversity among our employees. At every level, we are committed to developing our personnel by fostering a healthy learning environment and promoting their career advancement. As a responsible corporation, IOR is mindful of our corporate responsibilities towards our stakeholders and the community. We take pride in our long tradition of implementing sustainable and sound agronomic practices. We also make efficient use of natural resources and minimize the environmental impact of our operational activities through various energy efficient and waste reduction measures. As a founding member of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, IOI leads the way in adhering to the highest standards for sustainable palm oil production and in promoting the use of sustainable palm oil around the world. We also strive to build a reliable and traceable palm oil supply chain for the benefit of our customers across the globe. Our consistent efforts in sustainability and good management practices have been well recognized in the industry and accorded many prestigious accolades. While we have made great strides in growing our business in a sustainable and responsible way, we believe in continuing and increasing our efforts towards excellence in everything we do. We strive for a future where IOI steadily expands its reach and increases its value add. A future where we continue to be a crucial presence in the daily lives of people around the world. Fulfilling our purpose for leadership and excellence, we intend to conquer new horizons and forge a better and brighter future for our group.
there is more than just one path to success. Many must go their own way and forge their own destinies. Traversing a path of hard work with diligence. Enduring through times of trial and struggle. Learning to persist, to hold on, to never give up. From a spirit of fortitude, rooted in determination, a strong foundation for success is built. Growing from strength to strength with perseverance and persistence. From humble beginnings, Founded on an unfailing belief in a single commodity, IOI's oil palm plantation business is the heart of our company. With over 230,000 hectares of planted area in Malaysia and Indonesia and still growing, we are one of the largest plantation companies in the country. IOI has grown into a global enterprise with operations in eight countries exporting to more than 85 countries worldwide. Our hands-on management and commitment to productivity has led us to being recognized as one of the industry's most cost-efficient palm oil producers. Our relentless pursuit for new opportunities for growth has also made IOI one of the largest vertically integrated palm oil companies in the world. From plantation to downstream manufacturing, our refineries in Malaysia and the Netherlands play an important role in the midstream segment of our supply chain. In the downstream manufacturing segment, we are one of the world's largest oleochemicals and palm-based fatty acid producers with production facilities in Malaysia and Germany. Our ester plant in Germany is one of the exclusive few in the world which is both GMP certified and US FDA approved to produce chemical ingredients for pharmaceutical application. IOI is also a major global player in specialty oils and fats with operations in the Netherlands, United States, Canada, Ghana, China and Malaysia that are carried out by its associate company Bangi Lotus Crocline. Leveraging on its more than 120-year-old history, expertise in lipid solutions and state-of-the-art facilities, Bungie Lotus Crocline delivers reliable and quality products for the global food and infant formula manufacturing industry. IOI believes in the transformative power of technology and progressively invests into research and development to enhance our commitment to quality. IOI Palm Biotech has spearheaded planting material improvements for nearly three decades. Its tissue culture laboratory is leading research in high-yielding oil palm clones, boosting its plantation productivity through biotechnology. Continuing our commitment to its R&D and innovation, our downstream manufacturing business has formed collaborations with world-class partners who value our expertise and know-how. Together, we work to create customized and value-added solutions for our clients in unique and specialized settings, such as our creative studios. IOI is led by a loyal workforce from more than 25 countries who strive daily to increase value-add and deliver results for our customers and shareholders. Across every division and country in which we operate, we value and promote diversity among our employees. At every level, we are committed to developing our personnel by fostering a healthy learning environment and promoting their career advancement. As a responsible corporation, 
IOR is mindful of our corporate responsibilities towards our stakeholders and the community. We take pride in our long tradition of implementing sustainable and sound agronomic practices. We also make efficient use of natural resources and minimize the environmental impact of our operational activities through various energy efficient and waste reduction measures. As a founding member of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, IOI leads the way in adhering to the highest standards for sustainable palm oil production and in promoting the use of sustainable palm oil around the world. We also strive to build a reliable and traceable palm oil supply chain for the benefit of our customers across the globe. Our consistent efforts in sustainability and good management practices have been well recognized in the industry and accorded many prestigious accolades. While we have made great strides in growing our business in a sustainable and responsible way, we believe in continuing and increasing our efforts towards excellence in everything we do. We strive for a future where IOI steadily expands its reach and increases its value add. A future where we continue to be a crucial presence in the daily lives of people around the world. Fulfilling our purpose for leadership and excellence, we intend to conquer new horizons and forge a better and brighter future for our group. There is more than just one path to success. Many must go their own way and forge their own destinies. Traversing a path of hard work with diligence. Enduring through times of trial and struggle. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the board, I welcome you to the 51st AGM of IOI Corporation Bahad, our first virtual AGM, which is held in compliance with Section 327 of the Companies Act 2016 and Article 70 of the Companies Constitution. The conduct of this virtual AGM is also in accordance with the guidance note on the conduct of general meetings for listed issuers issued by Securities Commission. In view of the COVID-19 pandemic and with the safety of our shareholders and employees being of primary concern, your board and your our management have considered all available options and decided that the 51st AGM be conducted virtually via remote participation and electronic voting facilities without physical attendance of by shareholders. As we embrace the new norm, I thank you all for your virtual presence and continuous support for the company. Together with my fellow directors, we are indeed very happy to connect with you and answer any queries that you may have relating to the company and the agenda of today's meeting. For expediency, we will deal with the questions from shareholders after all the agenda items have been tabled. You may type your questions within the chat box at the bottom of the messaging screen and click on the arrow button, button to submit during the course of this AGM. Questions can be submitted at any time 
until the announcement of the question and answers or Q&A session. We will try our level best to answer all questions and for questions which are related or similar in nature, we will group the questions and provide a single response. Before proceeding, let me introduce my fellow directors and members of senior management in attendance today. With me at this broadcast venue and seated apart to observe physical distancing rules are our managing director and chief executive, Dr. Li Yao Cho, who is seated on my immediate right. Followed by Dato Karuna Karan and Mr. Chia Tech Kwang. On my far right is our group CFO, Mr. Lee Tuan Meng. And next to him is Tan Sri Dr. Rahmat. Seated on my immediate left is our company secretary, Mr. Vincent Tan. As you can see on the screen of this live webcast, my fellow director, Mr. Li Yao Seng, who is currently overseas, is joining us remotely. Also present at this broadcast venue are the representatives from our external auditors, Mr. Tang Seng Chun and Mr. Tan Kiang Peng of BDO PLT. I wish to advise that under Article 65 of the company's constitution, the quorum necessary for the transaction of business at a general meeting shall be two members present personally or by proxy or by corporate representative entitled to vote. The company secretary has confirmed that the requisite quorum is present and I shall call the meeting to order. Ladies and gentlemen, the notice of AGM has been issued and published within the stipulated time and advertised in the new stretch times. The, I, we shall take the notice as having been read. In my cas capacity as chairman of the meeting, I have been appointed as a proxy by some shareholders and will be voting in accordance with their instructions. In compliance with the main market listing requirements of Busa Malaysia Securities Bahad, all resolutions set out in the notice of AGM will be voted by poll. Therefore, as chairman of the meeting, I hereby demand a poll to be taken on all the resolutions pursuant to Article 73 of the company's constitution. The company's poll administrator, Boardroom Share Registrar Sindaran Bahad, will conduct the electronic polling and the boardroom Corporate Services Sindarian Bahad will act as independent scrutineers to validate the votes cast at this meeting. I will now invite the representative from the boardroom share registrar Sindarian Bahad to explain how the online voting is to be conducted and the housekeeping rules for the online voting process. Thank you, Tan Sri Chairman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm the representative for Boardroom Share Registrar, the poll administrator appointed for this virtual AGM. I will now explain the functions available within Lumi AGM portal and the process of poll voting. By using this portal, all remote participants will be able to view the live webcast of IOI Corporation Burhat AGM proceedings, post questions to members of the board of directors, and submit your votes in real time while the meeting is in progress. To view the live streaming of the AGM proceedings, please click on the broadcast icon. The broadcast audio will continue to play in the background, even when the poll is open or broadcast panel is minimized. If you encounter problems with the live streaming via the web browser, kindly click to refresh your browser. To post questions, please click on the messaging icon. Type your question within the chat box at the bottom of the messaging screen and click on the arrow button to submit. Once the voting has opened, the resolutions and voting options will be displayed. To vote, please select one of the available options, for or against. A confirmation message will appear to indicate that your vote has been received. To change your vote, please press cancel and reselect the option again. Once the poll is closed, you may return to view the live webcast for the announcement of the results by the chairman. To give you an opportunity to practice the, on a poll voting procedure, we shall now have a test resolution that you can vote on. The test resolution is, are you ready for the virtual AGM? And the voting will open for 30 seconds for this test resolution. Please vote now. After 30 seconds, voting will be closed. Let's have a look at the result of voting. The test resolution has been carried. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. I shall now hand over the meeting proceeding back to Tan Sri Chairman. Thank you, Cheryl. Ladies and gentlemen, online voting is now open to allow shareholders to cast their votes during the meeting proceedings. Please note that voting can be done at any time during the meeting proceedings until the completion of the Q&A or question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now share our company's updates with you to be presented by our group CFO. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be preparing, uh, presenting the overall performance of the IOI Group for the financial year ended 30th June 2020. Now we can see from the chart, we have shown the revenue, earnings before interest and tax, PBT, profit after tax, and basic earnings per share. You can see that the earnings, the revenue was up by 6% from 7 percent 4 billion to 7.8 billion, mainly to, due to the overall higher selling price achieved in the year. On EBIT, the overall EBIT achieved of 1.14 billion is higher by 6% compared to 1.1 billion in 2019. The higher profit mainly is mainly due to higher contribution from the plantation segment, which was partially offset by the lower operational contributions for the resource-based manufacturing segment. Now, if you look at the PBT, the overall group PBT of 8 to 6.7 million in financial year 2020 
is lower by 5% compared to financial year 20, 2019, mainly due to higher foreign currency borrowings translation lost. In financial year 2020, the loss was 209 million, and for financial year 2019, it was 123 23 million. This is due to the fluctuations of the, uh, especially US dollars. Looking at the profit after tax, the profit after tax for financial year 2020 was 601.7 million and is lower by, than 2019 by 3%. Now, do take note that there in the um, 2019, you find that the tax is higher and it's mainly due to the adjustments of the RPGT rate from 5% to 10%, which has resulted in an additional tax impact of 63 million. Overall, on the earnings per share, the basic earnings per share in financial year 20 was lower at 9.57 cent as compared to 10.05 cent last year. I'll go to segmental profit. Now, the segmental profit, you see a pie chart. This slide shows the segmental profit for the group. You can see for the financial year 20, the plantation segment has seen a high contribution of 63% as compared to 46% in financial year 19, whereas the resource-based manufacturing, mainly coming from refinery and oleo chemicals, contribute, contributed 35%. That's lower compared to financial 19 of 53 percent. The corresponding 2020 and 2019 plantation and resource-based manufacturing segment profit is shown below the pie chart. I will explain the uh, variations in the plantation and the resource-based manufacturing profit in the following slides. Okay, on the plantation segment, I'll now explain the main reasons for the high contribution profit in 2020 as compared to 2019. Now, the higher profit in financial 20 of 701.3 million as compared to 483.9 million in financial 2019 is mainly due to the higher CPO average price realized of 2,314 per metric ton in 2020 as compared to 2,025 per metric ton in 2019. Now, the other contributing factor is also the improved, higher, uh, improved crude palm oil extraction rate of 21.83% as compared to 2019 or 21.44%. Now, this, these two major contributors, however, was offset by the lower FFB production in 2020, which is 3.1 million metric ton versus 2019 of 3.4 million metric ton, mainly due to aggressive replanting and also delay effects of the long dry spell in 2018 and 2019. Now, I'll go into the resource base. Uh, manufacturing segment. Now we did, there is two uh, so-called the uh, the chart shown. I mean uh, the chart shows the operating profit and also some of the charts below to explain the the differences. Now the overall lower profit in financial year twenty of three eight five point one million as compared to financial year nineteen of five five three point four million was mainly due to the following reasons. The lower, although you will see some uh, uh, so-called higher sales in the refinery segment, but margins were low. Now, the lower contribution, operational contributions from oleochemical and refinery subsegment is the result of lower margins. And these lower margins is due to the overall higher oil palm prices. As you know, the input uh, 
material for oleo chemicals is the CPO price. Now, when you look at the right hand side of the chart where it shows the share, uh, share of associate results, it is lower due to lower sales arising from the COVID-19 pandemic as well as a one-off one debt write down in the European operations, namely Bangi Lotus, in which IY has 30% share. Now, this um, profit is also affected, the low profit is also affected, as you're aware of the MCO, where uh, it is when it started in March 2020. I'll go to the balance sheet. Now, the group balance sheet, um, you can see that the total assets as of 30th June 2020 is 16.7 million and is higher compared to 16.5 billion as at 30th June 19. The short term assets, there's a, slight, uh, uh, there's a higher, there's a, it's higher mainly due to higher stocks of inventory which were subsequently sold in July and August 2020. Lower cash and contribution of 2.3 billion as at 30th June was lower compared to 2.6 billion as at 30th June 19, mainly due to one, the operating, the lower operating activities. This is, you can find in uh, the financial report uh, cash flow statement. And the other factor is also the share buyback, which you will also see in page 20 of the financial report of 68 million, 68.1 million. And the other key factor is the new and replanting uh, pass for the um, aging um, palm trees. Uh, you can find it on page 14, no, page six, uh, 36, which amounts to 176.5 uh, million. We go into the capital expenditure. This particular slide actually shows the breakdown of the major categories of capexes. And uh, you can see that it is relating to free, uh, leasehold land. Now, in the new planting and re replanting expenditure, it is higher at 176.5 million in financial year 20 compared to 143 million in financial year 2019. Uh, and this is due to aggressive replanting, especially in Sabah. Uh, this is to replace the aging uh, palm trees, which have uh, passed its prime production age. And of course, these replanting activities is done also to uh, sustain and improve the FAB production in the future. One other key area which I would like to highlight is the WIP and the machinery and building improvement. Now, this relates to, for example, the new uh, oleo chemical plant in Pry, which has incurred to date about 25 million. In total, we are expected to uh, spend about 200 million. And uh, also, the biodiesel plants at the plantation and other plant projects in Germany factory. The SAP and other computer hardware is, this is where we went on a di digitalization exercise. And this is the expenditure we incurred for the last two years. We'll go into the equity payments. Now this chart, uh, this ex, uh, basically the dividend declared to, for a year is, um, there are two, uh, Two um, interim dividend payments of four cents each, and total amount paid was five hundred two million. The total dividend paid in two zero twenty was also eight cents per share. Total total share buyback amounted to sixty eight point one million, representing eighteen point two million shares, or zero point three percent of share capital. The overall average price per share was three point. Three ringgit and seventy-four cents. This is my, the end of my sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now proceed with the agenda for today's AGM. I will read out all agenda items before we proceed to the question and answer session. The first item on the agenda is to receive 
the audited financial statements for the financial year ended 30th June 2020 and the reports of the directors and auditors thereon. The audited financial statements are laid in accordance with Section 340 of the Companies Act 2016 for discussion only and do not require shareholders' approval. Hence, it will not be put for voting. Summary of the group's financial overview and performance highlights for the financial year 2020 are set out on pages 48 to 53 of the annual report. Further details of the financial, group financial and business review are outlined on pages 54 to 69 of the annual report. For shareholders who are keen to read more about the groups, our group's sustainability matters, please refer to our standalone sustainability report, which is made available on our website. Now let us move to the second item on the agenda, which deals with the re-election of our directors, Tansri Dr. Rahmat and Dato Li Yao Cho, who retire in accordance with Article 91 of the company's constitution, and being eligible, have offered themselves for re-election. Their profiles are set up on pages 77 and 75 of the annual report. Both Dr. Tansri Dr. Rahmat and Dato Lee have undergone performance evaluation for the financial year under review and have demonstrated that they remain committed to their roles and continue to be effective and valuable members of the board. The third item on the agenda is to approve the payment of directors' fees, inclusive of board committee's fees, of Ringgit Malaysia 1,885,000. I read again, 1 million and 85,000 for the financial year ending 30th June 2021, payable quarterly in areas for each month of completed service of the directors during the financial year. The fee structure is disclosed on page 94 of the annual report the basis of which is the same as the last financial year. The fourth item on the agenda is to approve the payment of director's benefits other than director's fees of up to Ringgit Malaysia 280,000 for the period from 30th October 2020 until the next annual general meeting. The director's benefits payable for the same period, for the set period, comprise, amongst others, meeting allowances, insurance coverage, and golf privilege, benefit to independent non-executive directors. The Ringgit Malaysia 280,000 is an estimated maximum amount. The actual amount of the director's benefits will be known only at the time of the next AGM. Now let us proceed to the fifth item on the agenda. That is to reappoint BDO PLT as auditors for the financial year ending 30th June 2021, and to authorize the Audit and Risk Management Committee to fix their remuneration. 
This resolution is proposed by the board, uh, by your board, based on its audit and risk management committee's recommendation. And having been satisfied with the results of the annual assessment of BDO, BDO have expressed their willingness to continue in office. The audit engagement partner of BDO, Mr. Tang Seng Chun, and the audit director, Mr. Tan Kiang Peng, are present at today's AGM. They are free to answer any question relating to their auditor's report. The proposed ordinary resolution under item 6.1 of the agenda are to seek approval for Dato Karuna Karan and Mr. Chia Tek Wang to continue to act as independent non-executive directors of the company until the conclusion of the next AGM of the company. I shall take the text of the set resolutions in the notice of this meeting as having been read. Dato Karuna Karan, who joined the board on the 17th of January 2011, as an independent non-executive director, has served for a cumulative term of more than nine years. And shareholders' approval had been sought at the last AGM to allow him to continue in office until the conclusion of this AGM. Mr. Chia, on the other hand, was appointed as an independent non-executive director on the 22nd August 2012 and therefore will attain a, a, an accumulative term of nine years on 22nd August 2021. Their profiles are set out on pages 78 and 79 of the annual report. Your board has had, through its governance, nominating and remuneration committee, assessed the independence of both Dr. Karu Nakaran and Mr. Chia and was of the view that their retention as independent non-executive directors are in the best interest of the company. Details of the board's justification and recommendations are set out on pages 121 and 122 of the annual report. The next item on the agenda is the proposed resolution, ordinary resolution to seek renewal of a general mandate which, if passed, will empower the directors to allot and issue shares of not more than 5% of the total number of issued shares of the company for such purposes as the directors consider would be in the best interest of the company. I shall take the text of the resolution in the notice of this meeting as having been read. For shareholders' information, the company did not issue any new shares pursuant to Section 76 of the Companies Act 2016 under the general mandate which was approved at the last AGM of the company. The proposed ordinary resolution in item 6.3 of the agenda is to seek renewal of the, author the authority for the company to purchase up to 10% of the total number of issued shares of the company. The details of the proposed renewal of existing share buyback authority are stated in Part A of the circular to shareholders dated 1st October 2020. 
I shall take the text of this resolution in the notice of this meeting as having been read. Item 6.4 of the agenda is to seek approval from the shareholders for the renewal of the shareholders' mandate for recurrent related party transactions of a revenue or trading nature which are necessary for day-to-day -day operations involving the interests of directors, major shareholders, or persons connected to the directors and or major shareholders of the company and its subsidiaries. I shall take the text of the resolution in the notice of this meeting as having been read. The interested directors, interested major shareholders, and persons connected to them are set out in Part B, Section 4 of the Circular for Shareholders, dated 1st October 2020. These interested parties, together with persons connected to them, shall abstain from voting during this resolution. Agenda 7 on item on this, uh, excuse me, and item 7 of the agenda is to transact any other business of which due notice shall have been given. I have been informed earlier by the company secretary that there is no other business to be transacted. Ladies and gentlemen, since all the resolutions have been tabled, I shall now open the question and answer session. We have received a letter from Minority Shareholders Watch Group, MSWG, in relation to our AGM. For the benefit of our shareholders, let me invite our group managing director, Dato Lee, to present our answers to MSWG's questions. Thank you, Tan Sui Chairman. So, I shall read out the questions from Minority Shareholders Watch Groups, followed by the answer. We have prepared a written answer, but I, I shall not follow the written answer entirely. I will uh, expand upon that the answer a little bit in my own words. So, the question one is, the group aims to diversify planting of crops away from full reliance on oil palm to other crops such as coconut and kanaf to limit the group's exposure to palm oil price volatility. Right. And the question is, can you flip on? To the, so the question is, uh, when does the group target to commence the planting of the coconut? Now firstly, to put in context, uh, we have already planted some amount of coconuts in the past. So about uh, 10 years ago, we have planted the, about uh, 54 hectares of coconuts. For, uh, these are pandan coconuts. And uh, last year, we planted about 190 hectares. So going forward, we are going to plant in end of next year, about uh, 300 hectares. But these are all, not all. So we are, overall, we target to plant, I would say, ranging from uh, at least 2,000 hectares of coconut uh, in the medium term, probably over the next uh, four years, four or five years. Next. So the second question is that, given that local planters are facing challenges from the influx of cheaper Indonesian coconuts in the market, how does the group plan to penetrate the Malaysian coconut market to compete against local planters and imports of coconuts? So I, I'm not uh, aware that MSWG is also an expert in coconut planting. <laughs> but uh, I've checked on that, the cheaper Indonesian coconuts. Actually, they are of poor quality because there's uh, li very little qu quality control in, in the Indonesian uh, planting industry. So what 
so the cheap, these Indonesian coconuts that actually land up here, uh, actually they are not of good quality. And also they, what part of the reason also is because the, uh, Indonesia is very vast, yeah, a lot of islands. So it takes quite some time for the coconuts to reach to Malaysian shore and, uh, and therefore they are also not fresh. So for, for us, we, we are planting, so remember we have planted uh, 54 hectares of pandan coconuts. That's, so that's for uh, drinks, coconut drinks. So the profit from there is about 100, no, I beg your pardon, it's about 18,000 ringgit per hectare per year. So actually it's higher than the profit from uh, palm oil. So going forward, of course, we, we are building up more uh, uh, coconut uh, plant, plantings. And our strategy is to not just go into the drinks market, but also go into the santan and also the what is now very popular, the coconut oil uh, segment. So that, so uh, in fact, we may go further on in terms of coconut oil to go into organic coconut oil segment. So that would be, and this would be, uh, this would be can be so through our uh, our associate, our specialty fats associate, uh, Bangi Lotus Scotland. There's big demand for virgin coconut oil in uh, Europe. So next question, question next question is, uh, the group expects that once the government eases the traffic the travel restrictions, allowing workers with expired work permits to return home, there may be a labour shortage due to the uncertainty of the incoming of workers. How many of the group's foreign workers' work permits are expected to expire this year and next year? To what extent would it impact the group's plantation operations? Okay, of course, the what it what was carried on in the annual report about the workers uh, being able to leave Malaysia, of course, has already happened because the annual report was uh, the, uh, prepared some time ago. So, but, so there's some amount of uh, repatriation, we call it repatriation of the workers that have happened since the, uh, the start of the, re uh, we call it restricted RMCO, or the recovery MC. Uh, movement control order sometime in May. So, but however, we, are, we have offered a, a retention gratuity scheme to the workers uh, for them to stay for one more year, even after their work permit has expired. So, so far, I think about, depending on the locality, 30 to 50% of the workers have accepted this gratuity. Uh, to answer the question more directly, so for the permits that were expired this year is about 1,500. But out of that, uh, about 40% of the, these expiring work, workers whose work permits has, has expired this year uh, actually continued for one more year. So nevertheless, there's, there's still an impact on the, to what extent will it impact the group's plantation operations? There's still an impact cost on our operations. But, uh, but for harvesting-wise, I would say that uh, we are trying to reduce the impact on the harvesting operations as much as possible. So we do this by redirecting workers from manuring, from doing manuring and uh, weeding, which are not so urgent, to uh, harvesting, when, when the, when the, which cannot wait because the fruits are ripening. So the effect on the groups are not so... Uh, big and, and uh, only maybe only resulting in uh, a bit longer in the harvesting interval from the normal 15 days to maybe 20, 20 plus days. Next question. Uh, this question three. So the group's new 110,000 metric tons per year capacity oleochemical plant in Prime Penang is estimated to complete by end of 2021. This oleochemical plant utilization rates, the group's one, has been declining since FY 2018 from 83% to 
77% in FY 2020. So question is, with the plant in Pry coming on stream, so how would it impact the group's oleochemical plant utilization rates going forward? Yeah, so firstly, ju just to clarify, of course, the, the, the figure that's, that's given on the capacity utilization rate is a, theor is a we call it a nameplate capacity utilization. It's a, a bit of theoretical one. In practice, because the, the plants actually, they process different kind of uh, products, so therefore they re require a, a switch over. And when they switch over, the, the, idle, the idle time will inevitably happen. So in effect, so we call the effective, we normally measure our capacity utilization by effective utilization rates. So that is uh, more towards the high 80%. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's true that FY 2020, the, the utilization rate has been uh, affected. And this is, of course, uh, due to widely known reason, which is the COVID-19 pandemic, which happened uh, in uh, around January or February this year. So because we sold products to China, so the effect on the, our oleochemical plant actually happens uh, around January uh, this year. So it has declined and the effect continues to be there, of course. And today, <laughs> It's anyone's guess uh, when the recovery of, from, of the economy from this uh, pandemic will happen. Our oleochemical, of course, business is heavily uh, influenced by the general economic situation. And I think most of the experts will predict that uh, we'll, we'll only, only when the mass production of vaccines are, are there and available to the public, then the we can expect a normalization of the economy, which, uh, I, which is expected to be around middle or maybe a bit later than uh, middle of next year. But, ne but uh, nevertheless, this new plan, to, to answer the question, the question more specifically, the new plan is adding about 15%, only about 15% to our overall capacity. And even though we say that we are going to target to finish end of next year, but we expect it will be a bit, uh, a few months uh, delay. And, uh, and so it will come on stream in early calendar year 2022, still within our FY 2022. But, uh, but, we, but uh, uh, we hope that with the Econom recovery of economy by then, and going back to pre-COVID-19 pre pandemic or even better than pre-COVID-19 uh, pandemic level, uh, this we are able to, this, uh, the plant utilization for this new plant is able to you know, move up. Uh, we never expected 100% utilization in year one anyway. So it's always a progressive step up. But within three years, we expect the, the this capacity for a new plant would be should be fully taken up. Question number four: The share of associates results of 144.5 million ringgit is lower due to lower sales arising from the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as a one-off debt write down in the European operations. So the question is, what was the amount of the one of that write down in the European operation? So this European operation, of course, is, the, is, the, is that belonging to our, Bangi Lod our associate Bangi Loaders Scotland. So there's a, indeed, there's a debt write down, principally uh, from Russia. And the amount is about Euro, 11 million uh, Euro. Uh, so it, but we have only 30% share of that because uh, it's a 30% associate. So that, that uh, amounts to 3.3 uh, million euro and ringgit-wise about 15.5 million. Next question. Ah, this is question number five. Mr. Chia Taekwon, the independent non-executive director of the company, only attended only four out of six board meetings and 
audit and risk management committee meetings, 67 percent attendance during the financial year. What are the reasons for him not being able to attend the other two board meetings and the ARMC meetings during the financial year? So I think all, all these, the, the non-attendance of Mr. Chia happened all in last year. So uh, reason, reason is that uh, Mr. Chia has to travel uh, overseas, I believe to sometimes to, to UK. And so uh, when the meet, and unfortunately the quite a number of the meetings scheduled last year had to be rescheduled you know, due to uh, various reasons uh, on short notice. So, and Mr. Chia has, had already made his traveling plans to these overseas countries. So, therefore, he could not make the board meetings. But I'm glad to say that because, thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, so this year, Mr. Chia is, was able to attend all the board meetings and ARMC meetings. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dato. The company secretary had, has informed that we have received several questions posed by shareholders attending this meeting virtually. I will now invite the company secretary to read them out and also to invite Dato Lee to answer those questions on behalf of the board. Hello. Thank you, Tansri Chairman. Yeah, we have received for the, uh, the moment 41 questions. Some of them are repeated and overlap with the earlier questions. So we have uh, the list with me. I will read it one, these questions, but this is a good question that somehow there will be a sub question inside these particular questions. So for this question number one from Shareholders Tan Ji Hao, past prime three profiles still relatively high at 33 percent can you give us more details on the aggressive replanting plant question uh, will the group continue to replant 10,000 hectares per year okay the, so actually mr tan has done a very well research a lot of research uh, he has even though there are only one question, but he has divided into five, five, uh, par five sub, sub questions, A to E, uh, from my, what I have here on the screen. So the first question is, will the group continue to replant 10,000 hectares per year? Yes. So the answer is yes. So we, as the, we have said in our annual report, we are going on an aggressive replanting schedule for the next uh, it will be for the next four years we have restarted uh, last year so and we are continuing on that Ag uh, aggressive replanting schedule what 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 do we mean by aggressive normally it, we plan about we replant about three to four percent of our total planted hectares per year three to four percent but uh, over since last year we have stepped up that to between five to six percent so on average, it's about between 9,000 hectares to 10,000 hectares per year. And, uh, and then there's a, a sort of sub B, question, B questions. What is the target of the total replanted area for the next three years? So, the, so I, think, I think I already explained. So every year about... 10,000, so next three years about 30,000 hectares. And, the, I, and then the, another sub-question is, what is the ideal tree age profile of each category of trees aiming to achieve? So my answer to that is, uh, we, we look at the weighted average of age of the palms. So to me, the ideal is about, 30, about 13 to 14 years weighted average age because the whole planting cycle of oil palm is 25 years so 13.5 is somewhere right in the middle so that would be the ideal one for for the company we are now at about 18 18 plus years or so 
and then the D is uh, how much capex will spend to replant in FY 2021 and the cost to replant per hectare. The cost to replant per hectare is, uh, is about ringgit 18,000 uh, per hectare. So the capex to replant will, if you, just answer 10, if you say 10,000 hectares per year, so to replant you 18,000 per hectare will be 180 million per year. What's the funding structure of capex? So, uh, so it will be from our internal funds because we, we still have about more than 2 billion ringgit of cash with us. So, so there's a question two. I'll, maybe you can, uh, company secretary can identify the read all the sub questions yep. all at once. Okay, the, the other part was more general is from the same shareholders. What is the extent mechanization program? What are the actual benefit obtained from this program? Uh, and what is the current labor to be planted per hectare per, uh, ratios? And what is the optimum ratio that the group plan to achieve by estate uh, mechanizations and plantations digitizations program? The last will be the, what's the main products for the, this new 100,000 metric ton audio chemical plant in Pride? And how much is the revenue the plant can generate? Assume that you will run f at the full utilizations. And what would be the group target utilizations to achieve in the next three years? Okay, so again, many sub questions, but I will repeat the uh, sub questions uh, uh, later also. So, the first question is about estate mechanization program. Uh, actual benefits obtained from this program? Well, the first obvious, obvious benefit is to reduce the, the deployment of manual labor in the estates. So, that's why we target to reduce the labor, manual labor in our estate by about 20% arising from this mechanization program. But besides reduction of manual labor, we are also aiming to improve the efficiency of the crop evacuation process from the, from the field to the ram and also, and also from the ram to the mills. So with the mechanization, we, we can improve the turnaround time of this, the crops and therefore improve the quality of the, of the CPO that we produce. The, what is the next question? The next question: What is the current labor to planted hectare ratio? The the current la ratio is uh, for our plantation is about one to eight. That means one worker takes care of eight hectares. That's an average. So, and and uh, optimum ratio that the group plan to achieve by estate mechanization and plantation digitalization programs. So it looks like Mr. Tan, the shareholder, has read the, our report quite well. So yes, so we plan to reduce labor not just by mechanization, but also by the, our digitalization program. So, the, the, so we are aiming to go to one to, uh, from just now one to eight hectares, one workers to eight hectares. We are aiming to improve our, this labor ratio to, to one to, is to 10 one worker can take care of 10 hectares, a eh, bigger area. So therefore, less workers required. And this is uh, both by estate mechanization and the digitalization. So about 20 to 25% reduction on, in the medium term. And by medium term, I mean the next, uh, in four years time. What's the, the, Next question is about the 110,000 metric tons new early chemical plant in Pry. How much revenue you can generate? So this is 110,000 metric tons per, uh, per year. And uh, depending on the palm, the palm oil price, so I would say, I would say the pr maybe the price is about uh, 3,200 ringgit for the fatty acids per ton. So the revenue will be about 320 million per year additional. Target at utilization to achieve in three years time. So when the plant, after the plant is com 
completed within three years, we, ex we expect full utilization. Next question. Yeah, the next question that we receive it from this Jade Asnida. Uh, her question was uh, any update on the IY new investment plan arising from the disposal of Lotus Scotland and how much the company have allocated? Yeah. So, any updates? There's no real updates. Uh, so, we, so, as reported in our previous quarterly. Uh, 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 results announcement. So we have we have not we only spend a very little uh, money uh, from the amount allocated from for new investments. So from this uh, loader's disposal. So uh, so we have probably nine hundred million ringgit left from this disposal proce proceeds allocated for for new investment. But our capacity is actually is more than that. Because our balance sheet is strong, as he, as I've uh, told you earlier, we have uh, a cash of about two more than two billion in reverse. So actually, we are able to uh, devote even more for our new investment. But uh, got to wait for the right opportunity. It doesn't mean that we are the money; it means we have to spend the money. Prudence is still important. Next question. The next question we have received from this uh, Ko Chun Ping. The net foreign sea currency translation loss on the foreign borrowings amounted to 209 million. Uh, although the forex translation loss is a cash flow item, IOI has been experiencing this loss consistently in the last few years. What are the steps taken by the board to mitigate further forex translation loss in view of the big amount of forex uh, borrowings? Okay, yeah. So indeed, uh, yes, we experienced a net foreign currency translation loss of about of about two hundred ten million last financial year, and that's because U.S. dollar has moved up, has strengthened even up to more than four point four uh, to. Uh, each US dollar to ring, to four point four ringgit, uh, but of course since then now US dollar has uh, weakened and uh, yes now now gone to gone, come down to about four point one six or four point one five uh, ringgit level, and therefore you expect to see uh, uh, quite a big translation gain for the company in the for. This uh, what we call this new financial year, first quarter. We have not announced the results yet, but uh, I would, I, I would uh, maybe I just say, give you a rough estimate. You will be, I, we believe the gain will be about hundred million for, the, for this uh, first quarter. And it's not true that the so it's actually the loss is not, would, it's not, um, it's not all, all the time. <laughs> so it's so it's not the. So it's not correct that we experience uh, forex loss consistently over the past few years. Uh, I believe two years ago it was a gain. So it is up and down according to the U.S. Uh, currency uh, fluctuation. So can we take further steps to mitigate this translation loss? It depends. It depends on the, the what is the tenure of the U.S. loan. If it's a, a long time away. And we have some long dated ones, so about twenty years, twenty years still more to run. So, so that uh, that we will just let it go without hedging it because it is uh, it's too expensive to hedge over the long term. But for those that are coming on stream for repayment in say within a year, we may consider hedging the uh, the our risk by buying the U.S. dollar in advance uh, to uh, so if we see that the. The, we are able to take opportunity of the strength of the US dollar at, the, at that time. Next question, please. All right. Uh, we have also similar uh, questions. Uh, these similar shareholders are asking this question on the Bumitama Agri Limited. The calling value of a Bumitama Agri Limited of uh, approximately 975 million uh, is much more higher than the current market value of Bumitama on the Singapore Stock Exchange. 
What is the accounting treatment of further decline of the market value of Bumitama shares? Will there be a fair value market impairment if the market value stay at current level? Okay, this is about the accounting treatment. So I will try to answer it. But if uh, if the group CFO wants to add on anything, you you may do so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Indeed, uh, Bumitama Agri shares have the price has declined. I just checked. It's uh, about uh, Sing is uh, li listed in Singapore. S uh, Sing forty three cents. When it was uh, when it was in IPO. Uh, 2012, it was 75 cents at IPO. So it, I believe our carrying value is based on the IPO price, 75 cents. And today, of course, it, it's gone down to 43 cents and therefore about a 40% decline. What's the accounting treatment? I think uh, because normally, as I understand it, if we are holding the share, shares on a long, for long-term investment, we normally do not uh, have a fair value adjust the value the this long term investment on a year by year basis, and indeed, uh, the Bumi Tama shares has gone up to almost one dollar, sing sing dollars in the past, and so even though we we were carrying the value at seventy five cents, we also did not adjust when it went up. So that's therefore we did not also do the adjustment when it go down, and. Of course, if it's, we think that this is a long-term trend that is going to stay that way, because we will consider uh, the impairment. But at the moment, I don't think so, because we see that of course palm oil price is now on a very strong upward trend. So I believe the price should can go up uh, in due due course of time. Next question. Yeah, uh, we have another question from uh, Chia Yubun, and he has written in this question on behalf of quite a number of the shareholders, which is I already summarized it and put in a, this single uh, question to respond. I humbly request the board of directors to consider give e-voucher or e-wallet credit to shareholders as a token of appreciation. Yeah, Datuli, please. Okay, so... I, I believe the company has already given a, a lot of more than token of appreciation by declaring uh, 502 million ringgit as a dividend uh, last financial year. Uh, so this, I think we are in a new normal. <laughs> so in the past, I, uh, we do give out vouchers for shareholders who attend personally I, in, the share, in the meetings. And... Uh, of course, that is because in appreciation of them traveling all the way here and their sort of their, their, their uh, transport costs, etc. But I think now with the electronic uh, system that we are having, and in fact, we are getting a good response from the shareholders. Almost, almost 300 shareholders uh, is registered. And so we don't think we need, we should <laughs> use this voucher to sort of uh, attract or entice shareholders to, to uh, attend the meeting. So we believe that the, sh the shareholders who are interested in the company uh, affairs will want to attend the meeting regardless of whether this voucher uh, apply or not. Uh, but having said that, we will, we will consider later on, on about this voucher. Alright, thank you. Uh, that totally, uh, we have uh, these follow-up questions from the just earlier shareholders, uh, Mr. Ko. Uh, he was asking uh, that the, this long-term target for the optimization of labors in the IY plantation worker ratio is uh, 1 to 10 hectares of planted area. Uh, can Datoli share what is the industry benchmark for these measures? So in, industry benchmark for this will be roughly what we are now, ex now having, 1 to 8 uh, hectares. So, yeah. All right. Okay, uh, we have uh, the other sh uh, shareholders, uh, as JR Asnida, together with this in chair files. Uh, question is, which products under downstream is contributing high margin? Going forward, which downstream value chain has the potential to grow profitably and what is the long-term strategy for downstream? Okay, very good question. 
our downstream, we are focusing a lot on the oleochemicals. The, and in fact, in our five, I just I launched a five-year plan for the group early this year. So we want to increase the contribution from oleochemicals segment by about 100 million ringgit in uh, four years' time. So this is uh, so this part of this will come from, of course, the expansion, uh, the new plant that uh, I've referred to uh, early on, but also from the this uh, more focus on the high value segment of the our ester fatty ester business. We have two plants fatty ester plants in Germany that uh, that have pro that is producing fatty esters that cater. Uh, to a large extent to the pharmaceutical and the personal care products category. So I, it's about so for pharmaceutical it's about 35% and for uh, personal care it's about 20% from these German uh, plants. So this is uh, this very high value added uh, few thousand ringgit per metric ton uh, uh, value added Com compared to refined products compared to simple refined products of maybe 50 ringgit or, or less per metric ton. So, so that is, uh, so, so therefore we are uh, really focusing on this high value added for the downstream, in particular for the pharmaceutical and the personal care, which includes the cosmetic segment. All right, uh, we have a same uh, shelter. Ask the next question on the our Saba operations. Currently, Sabah is under the this uh, enhanced uh, movement control order PKPD. What is the current situation, and how will the group business operations be impacted? Will performance be negatively affected, considering around eighty percent of the our estate located in Sabah? Okay, I think the figure is not eighty percent. So about sixty percent of our group's estates in is in Sabah, and uh, so and yeah we. So Sabah has experienced, uh, I would say, a very bad uh, bout of the pandemic, a lot of ca new cases. And so the government has imp implemented uh, this uh, more stringent con mov movement control order. They call it enhanced EMCO, uh, movement control order. So, uh, so how, how are our... And so under this, uh, for the last two weeks, we were asked to limit the number of workers to only 50% of from our normal ones. So indeed, and also operating hours were re restricted from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. It doesn't affect the estate operations, but it affects the palm oil milling operations when it has to close at 6 p.m. So I indeed, uh, that, that has been, uh, so of course, uh, with that restriction in manpower and op operating hours, indeed, uh, our operations has been affected to some degree. So, but I'm glad to say that uh, the Sabah government just announced yesterday that today they are going to uh, remove all the restriction on the number of workers to be deployed in the plantations. So we are we are back to normal. So the effect is only for about two weeks, uh, and we can catch up the harvesting uh, we, uh, from now onwards. All right. Uh, we have a next question, which is all the shareholders which would like to know is about a dividend from this Li Tak Fiong. Now the price of uh, this CPO price uh, has increased. Can we expect better dividends? Still early days. <laughs> Got to ask. <laughs> the, we have to discuss with the, the other board members. So we are still early days, but uh, and I think this is a. I think. Asnida also asked the question, what is the company's expectation of CPO price? I must, I must say that the, contrary to a, a, a lot of forecasts, say two or three months ago, where they think that the COVID-19 pandemic will affect the palm oil demand, actually, and therefore, uh, result in a softening of palm oil price. I must say that the situation has changed now. And our view, our company view also has changed uh, from what we 
actually put in the annual report uh, a few months ago, a couple of months ago. So we are now quite, due to the actually quite unexpected reduction in the supply or in the production of crop. So actually, this, this, we are now finding that the stock, the palm oil stock in the globally, is actually is uh, actually still very low. For example, Malaysia, we are only at what uh, end of last month we were at one point seven million tons. Uh, so very low compared to last year, same time maybe two point three million tons. And in Indonesia, also I was told the stock is low. Plus. Also that, the, and then we look at the competing oils, the soybean oil and sunflower oil. So actually they have gone up a lot also. So therefore, the, our discount of palm oil, in spite palm oil price has gone up so much, is still, is still there at the normal range of about 50 to 70 US dollars uh, per, per ton. So, so therefore, I'm quite uh, positive on the palm oil price in the next few months going to the first quarter of next calendar year All right. and uh, of course if we this trend continues and we don't know about the, the rest of the year but if this trend continues of course then uh, the company makes more profit and by our normal dividend practice we, not of course we we the dividend would uh, can be higher we have a uh, next question from Mr. Tan. What is the capacity of nursery? Is the group fully sourced its seeding from our own uh, nursery? Is the nursery sell the seeding to public? Oh, Mr. Tan asked very detailed questions. <laughs> <laughs> capacity of nursery. I, I, we sell about, uh, actually, it fluctuates, fluctuates very widely how much we, we produce according to the demand, actually. So the so I would say I would say in a, now nowadays we are only selling about one point five to two million seeds a year, and uh, probably six, six, 70 percent of that would be internally for our own use, and only 20, 20 30 percent for uh, for outsiders. Okay, okay. Uh, there's another question from the institutional shareholders. Uh, in Jeff is how will the Ladina impact the company's performance? Yeah. Ladina will, of course, uh, heavy rain will, of course, uh, impede the crop evacuation. But normally, the effect is not much. It's only when the only uh, uh, for a couple of estates which which are low lying where it's susceptible to flood. Even then, not not the whole estate, you know, a part of it. Then there will be some effect. But of crop evacuation but overall of course lanina has got a positive impact on palm oil price because reduction of palm oil the crop production and the evacuation will will of course actually reduce the supply and actually increases the price and therefore actually is, uh, at least short term wise is good for the company all right Okay, uh, we have another uh, question from this Chianisnida uh, Pintinano. Uh, what is the IOI capex for financial year 2021? And the, also the proportions of that for upstream and the downstream operations and the, our replanting rate and whether it's what is new planting rate uh, and what is the current status and as well as target for the mechanizations, oh, a lot, a lot of questions in there, a lot of sub questions in there. Capex for FY twenty one is about five hundred million, and the breakdown is, uh, I, I would say, about close to f about uh, three, uh, three high three hundred millions, uh, million, uh, maybe three hundred seventy or three hundred eighty million is for the upstream, and the rest hundred twenty million for downstream, and that is of course course chiefly for because of our new fatty, fatty acid plant in Pry for the downstream. Uh, replanting rate and new planting, I've already answered the questions. And uh, target for mechanization. So we target to, so we started this, re, we call it revitalized estate mechanization program about one and a half years ago. So 
we now we target to complete it over the next three years. Next question. All right. Oh, uh, this shareholders Lai Wing Leong. Uh, he has asked, in view of the increased demand for glove worldwide, is there any plans to increase rubber planting to cater for the robust demand of rubber products? Uh, we don't have plans to increase the rubber planting. And by the way, from what I know, uh, the gloves, I think 60-70% uh, of the gloves are not using natural rubber as a raw material. Actually, they are using the nitrile, which is from petro petroleum. All right. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Mr. Tan, the other shareholders. He had asked uh, three questions, actually, in that. What are the plans to improve refinery utilization rate and performance going forward? And next is the, what is the group uh, still own the specialty oil facts plant? And what is the outlook for resource based manufacturing divisions as the division margin is in a declining trend? So it's a, uh, from shareholder Mr. Tan Zi Hao. So I noted that he has asked many questions <laughs> and sub questions. So so uh, now more questions what plans to improve the refinery utilization rate uh, and performance going forward refinery we do refinery we have always consistently said during our quarterly results uh, announcement that it's not our main focus so it is only a means we call it a, we we don't call it downstream, we call it medium, medium stream. It's only a means for our downstream uh, as a supply of intermediate raw materials. So we, uh, so we don't particularly focus so much on it, but it is a very, I would say, a very tactical kind of uh, business. When the margin improves, we will process more. When margin is not good or even negative, we will just do the minimum just to satisfy uh, our group as well as our associates' requirements, our associates like Bangi Loaders, Scotland. And uh, do, do we still own specialty oils and fats plant? Not directly, but of course through our Bangi Loaders, Scotland, we, we still own 30%, but we don't own 100% of any of the plant. Yeah, everything is parked at Bangi Loaders, Scotland. Outlook for resource-based manufacturing division as the division's margin is in a declining trend. Declining trend uh, only happens in the last, uh, last uh, I would say, last nine months or a year. And that's because palm oil price went up. So it has always been like that for downstream. When the palm oil price, which is the raw material, goes up, our margin for resource-based manuf manufacturing will generally uh, come down. So we are not too worried and... Uh, because the upstream, of course, we are making more money. But on the whole, okay, maybe one thing that uh, we, I must also say about the oleochemical business. Part of the products for our oleochemicals actually caters for healthcare segments, besides the pharmaceutical that I mentioned. So the soap, the soap is, of course, you know, uh, uh, very inc increasing in demand due to the COVID pandemic. And also the we produce uh, alcohol esters that are used for hand sanitizer solutions. So again, that the demand for that has gone up a lot. And so not all parts of the oleo, the oleo chemical business are affected. Some are affected adversely. Some, in fact, are better. Next question. All right. Well, uh, we have a next question. is from this Mr. Ko Chui Ping. Uh, it's on the share buyback. His question is, the share buyback statement show shares bought back at the prices ranging from a low of three ringgit fifty cents to four ringgit forty eight cents. Uh, is recommend commendable that I will look the initiative to buy back more shares during the mar sharp market corrections in March due to COVID nineteen pandemic. What is the basis for IY to continue buying back its shares in May at prices four dollars forty six? to $4.48. There's a definitely good value to buy shares below $4, but at this uh, $4.46 to $48. Yeah. Yeah. You are right. So uh, there's at $4.46, $4.48, we should not be buying back shares. 
So how did it happen? We bought about buy back about 18 million shares. I would say, uh, and the average price is below four ringgit, three three seventy three eighty ringgit. Uh, this one is, and this uh, 446, 448 is about uh, maybe tens of thousands of shares yeah, out of 18 million shares. And that's why? <laughs> that's because we had an odd number of shares from the buyback. We wanted to make the volume uh, uh, a, rounded, a rounded amount. And uh, of course, now, now that it has happened after many months, so I, I, I'm able to disclose because there were there were parties who wanted to purchase from us at 450 plus at, at, at the and but the but the amount uh, is was a uh, was a rounded amount. That's why that's why we we did that. But unfortunately, last minute uh, he, that other party could not deliver on this uh, on that, and so we we are still uh, holding this uh, buyback shares. All right. Uh, we have uh, another question. Actually, basically, uh, this talk about the voucher, which is, but they, I think we, we just want to uh, address it as well. Uh, basically, the just chairman, uh, based on your reasoning on vouchers and spe uh, especially the number of attendees for this AGM, uh, not all the long term shareholders can have the means know how to attend this virtual meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Mr. Lim uh, say not, not all, the, not all the long-term shareholders, especially very senior citizen shareholders, can have the means or know how to attend virtual annual meetings. Okay, so the yes, of course, I realize that, and uh, so this virtual AGM is of course not a, it's a choice because based on today's health protocol, and of course it. It has its benefits because people don't have to travel very far to uh, travel at all to attend the meetings in person. So uh, indeed, we also at the same time are aware that there are those who are not so proficient in uh, managing the computers, the technology. So, so if, if and when the, the pandemic improves, because when it is safe and prudent for uh, shareholders to attend the meeting, so we so we we may of course consider to allow uh, we may consider because uh, I have to discuss with the board consider a hybrid type of uh, meetings so allowing people to come in virtually and and also those who want to attend to attend uh, in person especially for those who who say that they, they do not know how to operate their their computers. All right, thank you. Uh, based on the our record here, we have not received further any questions. So now I will shall pass the chess proceeding uh, to Tan Sri Peter Chin. Okay. Well, thank you, <coughs> Dato Lee and uh, Mr. Vincent Tan, for that Q and A session. We sincerely thank all our shareholders for all your questions. And hopefully, the answers provided by us will have satisfied your queries. Since there is no further question, I shall now declare the Q&A session as closed. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now allocate additional three minutes for those shareholders who have yet to vote. We anticipate that the counting of votes by the poll administrator and the validation by the independent scrutineers of the results will take approximately five minutes after the conclusion of the voting session. So in the meantime, we will play our corporate video. The meeting will resume upon receiving the poll results verified by the scrutineers. Thank you.
there is more than just one path to success. Many must go their own way and forge their own destinies. Traversing a path of hard work with diligence. Enduring through times of trial and struggle. Learning to persist, to hold on, to never give up. From a spirit of fortitude, rooted in determination, a strong foundation for success is built. Growing from strength to strength with perseverance and persistence. From humble beginnings, Founded on an unfailing belief in a single commodity, IOI's oil palm plantation business is the heart of our company. With over 230,000 hectares of planted area in Malaysia and Indonesia and still growing, we are one of the largest plantation companies in the country. IOI has grown into a global enterprise with operations in eight countries exporting to more than 85 countries worldwide. Our hands-on management and commitment to productivity has led us to being recognized as one of the industry's most cost-efficient palm oil producers. Our relentless pursuit for new opportunities for growth has also made IOI one of the largest vertically integrated palm oil companies in the world. From plantation to downstream manufacturing, our refineries in Malaysia and the Netherlands play an important role in the midstream segment of our supply chain. In the downstream manufacturing segment, we are one of the world's largest oleochemicals and palm-based fatty acid producers with production facilities in Malaysia and Germany. Our ester plant in Germany is one of the exclusive few in the world which is both GMP certified and US FDA approved to produce chemical ingredients for pharmaceutical application. IOI is also a major global player in specialty oils and fats with operations in the Netherlands, United States, Canada, Ghana, China and Malaysia that are carried out by its associate company Bangi Lotus Crocline. Leveraging on its more than 120-year-old history, expertise in lipid solutions and state-of-the-art facilities, Bangi Lotus Crocline delivers reliable and quality products for the global food and infant formula manufacturing industry. IOI believes in the transformative power of technology and progressively invests into research and development to enhance our commitment to quality. IOI Palm Biotech has spearheaded planting material improvements for nearly three decades. Its tissue culture laboratory is leading research in high-yielding oil palm clones, boosting its plantation productivity through biotechnology. Continuing our commitment to its R&D and innovation, our downstream manufacturing business has formed collaborations with world-class partners who value our expertise and know-how. Together, we work to create customized and value-added solutions for our clients in unique and specialized settings, such as our creative studios. IOI is led by a loyal workforce from more than 25 countries who strive daily to increase value-add and deliver results for our customers and shareholders. Across every division and country in which we operate, we value and promote diversity among our employees. At every level, we are committed to developing our personnel by fostering a healthy learning environment and promoting their career advancement. As a responsible corporation, 
IOR is mindful of our corporate responsibilities towards our stakeholders and the community. We take pride in our long tradition of implementing sustainable and sound agronomic practices. We also make efficient use of natural resources and minimize the environmental impact of our operational activities through various energy efficient and waste reduction measures. As a founding member of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, IOI leads the way in adhering to the highest standards for sustainable palm oil production and in promoting the use of sustainable palm oil around the world. We also strive to build a reliable and traceable palm oil supply chain for the benefit of our customers across the globe. Our consistent efforts in sustainability and good management practices have been well recognized in the industry and accorded many prestigious accolades. While we have made great strides in growing our business in a sustainable and responsible way, we believe in continuing and increasing our efforts towards excellence in everything we do. We strive for a future where IOI steadily expands its reach and increases its value add. A future where we continue to be a crucial presence in the daily lives of people around the world. Fulfilling our purpose for leadership and excellence, we intend to conquer new horizons and forge a better and brighter future for our group. There is more than just one path to success. Many must go their own way and forge their own destinies. Traversing a path of hard work with diligence. Enduring through times of trial and struggle. Learning to persist, to hold on, to never give up. From a spirit of fortitude, rooted in determination, a strong foundation for success is built. Growing from strength to strength with perseverance and persistence. From humble beginnings, founded on an unfailing belief in a single commodity, IOI's oil palm plantation business is the heart of our company. With over 230,000 hectares of planted area in Malaysia and Indonesia, and still growing, we are one of the largest plantation companies in the country. IOI has grown into a global enterprise with operations in eight countries exporting to more than 85 countries worldwide. Our hands-on management and commitment to productivity has led us to being recognized as one of the industry's most cost-efficient palm oil producers. Our relentless pursuit for new opportunities for growth has also made IOI one of the largest vertically integrated palm oil companies in the world. From plantation to downstream manufacturing, our refineries in Malaysia and the Netherlands play an important role in the midstream segment of our supply chain. In the downstream manufacturing segment, we are one of the world's largest oleochemicals and palm-based fatty acid producers, with production facilities in Malaysia and Germany. Our ester plant in Germany is one of the exclusive few in the world, which is both GMP certified and US FDA approved, to produce chemical ingredients for pharmaceutical application.
IOI is also a major global player in specialty oils and fats, with operations in the Netherlands, United States, Canada, Ghana, China, and Malaysia, that are carried out by its associate company, Bangi Lotus Crocron. Leveraging on its more than 120-year-old history, expertise in lipid solutions, and state-of-the-art facilities, Bangi Lotus Crocron delivers reliable and quality products for the global food and infant formula manufacturing industry. IOI believes in the transformative power of technology and progressively invests into research and development to enhance our commitment to quality. IOI Palm Biotech has spearheaded planting material improvements for nearly three decades. Its tissue culture laboratory is leading research in high-yielding oil palm clones, boosting its plantation productivity through biotechnology. Continuing our commitment to its R&D and innovation, our downstream manufacturing business has formed collaborations with world-class partners who value our expertise and know-how. Together, we work to create customized and value-added solutions for our clients in unique and specialized settings such as our creative studios. IOI is led by a loyal workforce from more than 25 countries who strive daily to increase value add and deliver results for our customers and shareholders. Across every division and country in which we operate, we value and promote diversity among our employees. At every level, we are committed to developing our personnel by fostering a healthy learning environment and promoting their career advancement. As a responsible corporation, IOR is mindful of our corporate responsibilities towards our stakeholders and the community. We take pride in our long tradition of implementing sustainable and sound agronomic practices. We also make efficient use of natural resources and minimize the environmental impact of our operational activities through various energy-efficient and waste reduction measures. As a founding member of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, IOI leads the way in adhering to the highest Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I have received the results of the poll validated by the scrutineers, and we shall now resume the meeting for the declaration of results. The Secretary will now announce the poll results on my behalf. May I have the poll results on the screen, please? Thank you. Tan Sri Chairman, I uh, wish to uh, announce the result uh, resolution 1 for 99.99% against, it's very immaterial. Resolution 2, 99.98% voted for against 0.017%. Resolution 3, 99.99% voted for and 0.09% voted against. Resolution 4, 99.99% voted for and 0.002% voted against. Resolution 5, 99.96% voted for against 0.03%. Resolution 6, 88.97% voted for and against 11%. Resolution 7, 99.39% voted for and against 0.6%. Uh, Resolution 8, 89.63% voted for with the 10.36% voted against. Resolution 9, 99.92% voted for and 
90% voted against. Resolution 10, 99.82% voted for and 0.17% voted against. Ladies and gentlemen, based on the results of the poll, I hereby declare that all ordinary resolutions for today's meeting are fully carried. With that, I now declare the 51st Annual General Meeting of IOI Corporation Berhad as concluded. Thank you for your participation and stay safe.